Hello everyone, this is Darren in GP Productions, and today we'll be kicking off our celebration of the Halloween season by spending the entire month of October going through one of my personal favorite horror movie franchises, that of which being the Child's Play franchise. To those uninitiated, I've only fairly recently done this annual tradition where once a year I'll celebrate the Halloween season by spending the entire month going over my favorite horror movie franchises. The first time I did this was with the Evil Dead franchise, and this year with the release of Chucky Season 2 on the horizon, I want to take a crack at talking about my personal favorite horror franchise, Child's Play. Now my history with this little foul mouthed ginger fuck is a pretty complicated one to say the least. Since, as far as I can remember, young me was petrified of this rage and obscenity fueled piece of plastic. It wasn't Freddy, it wasn't Jason, it wasn't Michael or Leatherface, it was this three foot tall walking nightmare that haunted my childhood dreams. The reason for which is because I think when it came to me being the spoiled little shit that I was as a kid, I had a lot of toys growing up, and just the thought of some of these things coming to life and trying to kill me shook me to my core. It was only around 2016 to 17 when I heard the announcement of another Chucky film being made, to where I decided to finally stop being a piss baby and take a dive into the franchise I fought my damnedest to avoid. I binged through Child's Play 1 up to Curse, and that is when Chucky made his mark to me as one of the biggest legends in horror history. But all legends have to start somewhere, which is why we're starting this little Halloween extravaganza by going to the one that started it all, Child's Play. The original Child's Play released in 1988 and kickstarted this series with a pretty big bang. The film centers around a six-year-old Andy Barkley, who was probably just the cutest little shit you could ever have in a horror movie. Yes, he said that Maggie was a real bitch and got what she deserved. Andy, how can you say something so horrible? I didn't say it, Chucky did. Alex Vincent's acting isn't the greatest, but you can't hold that against him given how young he is, and later on, he does show improvement. But in regards to future entries, I have free reign to talk whatever shit I want. Anyway, Andy receives a gift for his birthday. A good guy doll. But the more the film goes on, it becomes very apparent that there's more up with this doll than meets the eye. I know that when most people think of the Child's Play franchise, more often than not do people think of the protagonist that started it all, Andy Barkley. I feel he's almost as iconic with the franchise as Chucky himself, but in this first installment, he doesn't really do all that much. I'm not saying that as a bad thing, but upon my recent rewatch, it became very apparent that the major standout as far as protagonists go for this movie is his mother, Karen Barkley. Karen was played amazingly by Katherine Hicks. Most of the great performances come from her, because you can really feel the dread, the terror, or the motivation she has when on screen. The film also does a good job of having her deviate from the typical non-believer tropes that are synonymous with the horror genre, because they don't waste too much time on her not believing Andy, and she plays a key role in stopping Chucky and pushing the story along in general. She's also in what's probably one of the best scenes in the entire franchise, like seriously, this scene is so freaking good, you can really see and feel the desperation Karen has, and Hicks does a great job at carrying it so well up until Chucky's reveal. I'll talk further on that scene in a bit, but there's someone else I feel should be acknowledged in this film, is Chris Sarandon as Detective Mike Norris. It really disappoints me how Karen nor Mike return in any future installment, because they were true highlights as far as protagonists go for this film. For the little of him we have in this movie, Mike Norris made a really great impression by having Sarandon bring in a lot of wit, charisma, and charm to the role. And there's not that much I can say besides he just brings a really cool presence to the film whenever he's around. Also, I'm not sure if this was intentional or not, but his nonchalant delivery with some of these lines is so unnecessarily funny to me. Miss Peterson's dead, Miss Barkley. What? How? She fell from your kitchen window. Going further in on Andy, despite not being the best kid performer, this movie does a really good job of making you adore this little kid. I can't imagine any other young actor being able to pull off what the movie does with Andy. There's a level of charm that Vincent brings despite his inexperience. 
And I love how proactive Andy becomes. Instead of a helpless victim, he plays his part very well in avoiding and defeating Chucky. But how could I go through this review without touching on the main man of the hour, Chucky himself, played expertly by Brad Dourif. Both in human form and in doll form, Dourif off-rip does an outstanding job as a titular killer doll. For the little of him we see as the human Charles Lee Ray, Brad Dourif from the get-go makes an everlasting impression for this character. The voice and animatronic work go hand in hand on delivering us one of the most iconic horror villains. I said talk to me, damn it, or else I'm gonna throw you in the fire! You stupid bitch, you filthy <laughs> slut! Did you no, fuck no, with me? No, no, no. The puppetry and robotics have definitely stood the test of time, seeing as despite it being over 30 years, these still look amazing in my opinion. It's also crazy to think that even over 30 years of this franchise being around, that the consistency of Chucky from this movie onward has rarely if not never been changed. He may not be as over the top and wisecrack heavy as we know him now, but this is still very much the rude, foul mouthed, despicable, totally not pedophilic. Well, John. It's been fun, but I gotta go. I have a date with a six-year-old boy. Yep, totally not pedophilic, Chucky we all know and love. This movie's pace and overall structure as well contributes to making it great. There was an apparent two-hour cut of this movie that series creator and the film's writer Don Mancini worked to cut down to a well-rounded 87 minutes. I feel that worked well for this film because it never feels like it overstays its welcome and works as a serviceable and fun ride. There was also going to be a heck of a lot more Chucky, and I'm glad it was cut down because of the presentation and build-up they gave to Chucky. We don't see him in full for a lengthy portion of the movie, and it works greatly with how they handle the suspense. Like the Chucky reveal. Despite the fact that we already know the doll is possessed, they managed to make it intense as hell given the revelation that happened in front of Karen. It's a tone and vibe I wish they kept for more of the sequels, but it does make the experience you'll get with this movie a bit more unique when compared to future entries. Something I also never really acknowledged until this recent rewatch was the amount of really cool set pieces this movie offers. Like the little cool Chucky POVs, the car chase with Norris, the voodoo doll scene with John. And I know this is a little off topic, but for years I have always found John's live delivery here so damn funny. Cause you're an abomination. An outrage against nature! You perverted everything I've taught you and used it for evil, and you have to be stopped! As well as Eddie Caputo's house explosion, all display this movie's expertise in practical effects and amazing stunt work. Overall, 1988's Child's Play is pretty damn great. It has great practical effects and stunt work, the characters and performances are all on point, it's structured and presented very well, and serves as a really fun and suspense-filled ride. So, if you agree or disagree with anything I've said in this video, let me know right down there in the comments below. Also, be sure to like and subscribe. This is Darren at GP Productions, and take care.